Hey everybody, this is the fourth here. And in this video, I'm going to be comparing and contrasting peak, RMS, and actual loudness values. So right here, I have just a peak meter. And if I play this sound, you'll see I'm peaking at about minus eight decibels. And if I play this sound, it sounds quite a bit louder, but it's also peaking at minus eight decibels. And this is why you don't really wanna base your mixing decisions on your peaking values. Because if you decided that you wanted to put your snare at minus eight decibels, you could end up with your snare being this loud, or you could also end up with your snare being this loud. And in your mix, you know, the first snare might be too quiet, or the second snare might be too loud. And you know, it's really just not a reliable method of leveling. You could have a bunch of different snare sounds all peaking at the same level with a huge variety in how loud they actually sound. Because that peaking level really doesn't relate to actual loudness that well. Now, because of this, a lot of people like to use RMS instead, because the RMS reading is a little bit more along the lines of how we hear loudness. So you can see on this RMS meter here, the first snare goes up to about minus 17 RMS, and the second goes up to about minus 13. So you can see that it's a little bit more along the line of how we perceive that loudness. But even our mess isn't perfect. So if you listen to these two tracks and look at this RMS meter here, the RMS is going to be on the inside and it will also give you an RMS reading down here. You'll see that this track It goes up to around between minus two and minus three for that RMS value. But if you listen to this track, which sounds much louder, you can see that it stays pretty much between minus three and minus four. So even though it sounds quite a bit louder, it's actually at a lower RMS than this track. So it's still not really a perfect way of setting your loudness. So you still shouldn't really you know, rely on RMS values and always set your snare at a certain RMS value or anything like that. Because even though it is a bit more along the lines of how we hear, it's still not entirely reliable. And if you look at the RMS values that this meter provides and the RMS values that this meter provides, you'll see that they're pretty different. And I showed this in the previous video. So you can see that while this one's between minus two and minus three RMS, this one is hanging out at around minus five. So if you're reading a mixing guide and it tells you to set your snare at, you know, minus, at minus six RMS, well, I'd have to ask based on which RMS meter, right? So these meters can be helpful while mixing, definitely, but you shouldn't base your loudness levels entirely on peak or RMS your ears are really going to be much more accurate than using either of these. I personally use peak meters quite a bit in my production, but I don't use them to decide the levels of my sound or anything like that. You know, I never set my kick to a specific decibel value on the peak meter, but I do use them quite a bit for other purposes. So peak meters I do use a fair amount, but RMS meters I really never use at all. Yeah, I really don't think that RMS is a very great tool to use for mixing because it's meant to display perceived loudness, but it's not even that reliable for that purpose. So really, I just use my ears, you know, and that's how I set my levels and the peak meter I check out for other purposes.
that I will kind of explain to you in later parts of this tutorial in a bit more depth. Now, if you need a visual guide or some kind of reading to help you set your various levels right, the tool that I definitely recommend that I've found to be the most accurate is a spectrum monitor. And there'll be another video in this section about that.